Hi, Tom here with some more ACPL tips. What you're about to see was originally part of the previous video on convergency, but I decided that it was uh, too long, so I split it up into two videos. I definitely recommend that you go back and watch that previous video first. This video will look at convergency between rum lines and great circles, and it will look at conversion angle as well and do some exam questions. Okay, let's go. Now let's take a look at the convergency between rum line tracks and great circle tracks. You may remember that a rum line is a track which crosses all lines of longitude at the same angle, whereas a great circle is a track whose bearing is constantly changing. So generally speaking, we can draw uh, the two different tracks roughly like this. The total convergency between these two positions is the total amount that our track changes. Look at the difference in direction of the two angles. Firstly leaving A, basically looking like it's heading northeast, and by the time it gets to B, it's effectively heading southeast. So in terms of convergency between a rum line track and a great circle track, we can say that the total convergency is the sum of these two angles. In other words, convergency is the difference in direction of a great circle track between two points. And so now it begins to feel like we're getting onto something that is directly relevant to pilots. Sometimes you want to know what the angular difference is between the easily plottable rum line track and a more efficient, uh, cheaper, shorter great circle route, although if you're flying around in a single engine piston, this probably isn't going to be too helpful for you when you're planning your next cross country. And this is where the concept of conversion angle comes in. Think of conversion angle literally as the angle required to convert your run line track to a great circle track at either end of the route. And since we know that both angle one and angle two on this diagram are the same value and that added together they equate to the total convergency between the two points. We can say that conversion angle is equal to half the total convergency. Great, we're nearly there to go and look at some exam questions, but before we do, there's just one more piece of theory to look at and that is to understand how location on Earth affects the conversion angle relationship between great circle tracks and rum line tracks. Let me explain. Let's say we want to travel in the northern hemisphere between these two points and in the southern hemisphere between these two points. We can draw the rum line track, i.e. the track of constant bearing between them, and we can draw the great circle tracks between them. Remember, in the northern hemisphere, the great circle track arches towards the north pole, and in the southern hemisphere, the great circle track um, arches south. Great circle tracks always curve towards the closest pole. Well, if we're starting in the west of this map, going from the positions on the left, flying towards the east to the positions on the right, our rum line bearing from both of these positions will be just over 090. But notice how our great circle track changes as we go. If we're in the northern hemisphere, we start by flying a more or less northeasterly track, and in the southern hemisphere, we're flying a more or less southeasterly track. And of course, as we go along the great circle track, our um, track heading is constantly changing. So in the northern hemisphere, our track is steadily increasing. And in the southern hemisphere, our track is steadily decreasing. And look what happens as we go along the route. By the time we get to our destination in the northern hemisphere, we're now flying a more or less southeasterly track, and in the southern hemisphere, we're more or less flying a northeasterly track. And of course, if we were to go in the other direction, if we were to go westbound, starting in the east, heading towards the west, our run line track would be a heading just over 270, but watch what happens to our great circle tracks. 
We start off in the northern hemisphere flying northwesterly, in the southern hemisphere flying southwesterly, and watch what happens to our great circle tracks. As we progress along the route, our great circle track in the northern hemisphere will be a constantly decreasing heading until we're eventually flying a more or less southwesterly direction. And in the southern hemisphere, our great circle track is a constantly increasing heading until we're basically flying a northwesterly heading. It's really important to try and wrap your head around what's going on here because exam questions will ask you about how your track will be changing either at the start of the route or at the end of the route and you need to be able to work out what's happening if you're going eastbound or westbound. And there is a mnemonic and I've hesitated a lot about putting this in because honestly I actually don't find this very helpful. I'd much rather like look at the map and work out what's happening with the heading but have a look at this anyway. I'm going to show you, it's up to you whether you decide to use it or not. Uh, some people call this DIID, some people call it DIDI, whatever. What it's trying to show you is that if you're above the equator and you're flying to the west, then your heading's decreasing. If you're flying to the east, it's increasing. And conversely, in the southern hemisphere, if you're going from east to west, your heading's increasing. And if you're flying from west to east, your heading is decreasing. As I said, this isn't my favorite mnemonic or little um, tool to remember. I'd much rather just actually remember what on earth really is going on. And all you really need to do is um, think about a compass rose and whether you're increasing or decreasing your heading as you go. But whatever helps. If this gets you through your exams, perfect. And also there's a really quick kind of checklist that you can apply as you go into these questions um, to work out precisely what the question's actually asking you. Um, the first question is which hemisphere are you in? That greatly affects whether your great circle track is going to be above or below the run line track between your two points. Remember, the great circle track always arches towards the closest pole. The second item on the checklist is to work out which direction you're traveling. And the third item to work out is whether they're asking you about the start of the route or they're asking you about the end of the route. If you start off with those questions in the back of your mind, then you stand a good chance of not making any stupid mistakes when it comes to actually answering these exam questions. So, speaking of exam questions, let's take a look at some. Okay, this exam question says, the great circle bearing from A, 70 south, 30 west, to B, 70 south, 60 east, is approximately, and then you've got some answers. Well, the first thing that we'll do is uh, go through the checklist. Which hemisphere are we in? Well, we're in the southern hemisphere, which means that the quick sketch that we can draw um, as we're trying to get our head around this question puts the great circle track below our run line track. Secondly, which direction are you traveling? Well, you're going from A in the west to B in the east. So in this case, you're traveling eastbound. And thirdly, are you being asked about the beginning of the track or the end of the track? Well, it's saying from A to B. So I'm going to assume here that we're starting at position A and it wants us to know when we are at A, in which direction should we be going to follow the great circle track? Okay, got that under control. And so now the first thing that we need to think about is actually what's the formula? Well, we know that convergency is equal to a change in longitude times the sine of our latitude. So plugging the numbers into this formula, we've got a change in longitude of 90 degrees. We're going from 30 degrees west to 60 degrees east. Now let's multiply that by the sine of our latitude, which is the sine of 70 degrees south. And if you plug that into a calculator, you should get an answer like 84.6 degrees. But that's not it, we're not done yet, because all that's telling us is the total convergency between these two positions. Remember, we want the conversion angle to convert our run line track to a great circle track. So what do we do? We divide that number by two, and we should come out with 42.3 degrees. Great, so our conversion angle is 42.3 degrees, but what do we do with that? Well, we need to 
add it to something, having established that we're in the Southern Hemisphere, but what are we adding it to? Well, we need to add it to our initial run line track. And since both of these positions are on the same line of latitude, our initial heading, if we were following a run line track from A to B would be directly east, it would be 090. So now we can take 090, we can add 42.3 degrees to it, and we should come out with 132 Point three degrees. And if we go back to the uh, initial question and take a look at what the options were available to us, we can see that answer B is in fact 132 degrees. And that is the right answer. I hope you can see that it would be very, very easy to make some very simple mistakes if you well, I'm going to say if you don't draw a diagram, you might accidentally think you're in the northern hemisphere, you might accidentally go the wrong direction, and you could very easily take um, the wrong initial run line track, you could very easily do the wrong thing to it. So there's a good chance that if you've made a mistake, you've probably come up with one of the other answers on the screen. And again, I'm always going to say draw a diagram because it will help you. Okay, let's move on to another exam question. This one says, the great circle bearing of position B from position A in the northern hemisphere is 0, 040 degrees. If the conversion angle is 4 degrees, what is the great circle bearing of A from B? Okay, so let's start by drawing the run line track between these two positions and let's go through the checklist. Firstly, which hemisphere are we in? Very clearly, we're in the northern hemisphere. So our great circle track is going to curve upwards. Secondly, which direction are we traveling? Well, read the question twice. They've given us the great circle bearing of B from A, but what they're asking us about is the great circle bearing of A from B. So this time we're traveling westbound. And thirdly, are we being asked about the beginning of the track or the end of the track? Well, they're asking us for the initial great circle bearing in order to get from B to position A. So we're being asked about the beginning of our track. And so now we can start populating the diagram with the other pieces of information they've given us. Firstly, they've told us that the conversion angle is four degrees. So we can draw that onto the chart. They've also told us that the initial great circle track from A to B is 0, 4, 0 degrees. Which means that we can work out what the initial run line track would be from A to B because we can take our 0, 4, 0, we can add the 4 degree conversion angle and that would give us an initial run line track from A to B of 0, 4, 4 degrees. Great, that's fine, that's sensible, that makes sense. And of course you know that now we're going from B to A. So we need to work out what the run line track is going in the opposite direction. Really easy, just add 180 degrees to the initial run line track going A to B. And that'll give us a reciprocal run line track of 224 degrees. Perfect, and now we can just use our conversion angle that they've given us. Uh, we can take 224 degrees, we can add our four degree conversion angle, and we get a great circle track from B to A that will initially, at point B, be 228 degrees. So we can go back to the initial question, we'll choose option A, 228 degrees, and that is the right answer. Okay, let's take a look at this exam question, which says, the initial great circle track from A to B is 080 degrees, and the run line track is 083. What is the initial great circle track from B to A, and in which hemisphere are the two positions located? Cool, so let's start with a diagram. We've got A, we've got B, and the run line track from A to B is 083 degrees. Well, it also tells us that the initial great circle track from A to B is 080 degrees. That is, of course, less than 083. So our initial great circle track is curving upwards, which means if that's 080 degrees, we know that um, the great circle track arches towards the closest pole. So we must be in the Northern Hemisphere. 
So immediately we can get rid of two of these answers off the screen because we're not in the southern hemisphere. Now what's the question asking? It's saying um, what is the initial great circle track from B to A? So we need to do two things. We need to work out what the reciprocal run line track will be and work out what the conversion angle is between these two in order to work out what that great circle track B to A will be. Well the conversion angle is really really straightforward. We've got a great circle track of 080, a run line track of 083, the difference between those two is 3 degrees. So our conversion angle between these is 3 degrees. Cool. Uh, let's work out the reciprocal um, run line track from B to A. So to do that we're just going to do 083 plus 180 degrees. Uh, you can do that on a calculator, in fact you probably should do that on a calculator. 083 plus 180 should give us 263 degrees. So our run line track going from B to A is 263 degrees. Cool. To convert that into a great circle track we know that we need to do something with the 3 degree conversion angle. Well. Uh, if you just think about a compass rose in your head, then if we're going 263 degrees and we're going to adjust to the north by 3 degrees, then we're increasing our heading. So we're going to end up with a great circle track of 263 degrees plus 3 degrees, which is going to give us 266 degrees. So. 266 degrees is our great circle track from B to A and it must be in the northern hemisphere. So from the answers available on the board, thankfully it's there, I will go with A, 266 degrees and the northern hemisphere. Thank goodness for that. Okay. Not too tricky, hopefully not too tricky. Really easy to get yourself confused if you don't draw a picture. I said I wasn't going to say any more about that. so. There we are. Uh, let's move on to the next question. This question says, the average true course of the great circle is 100 degrees between points A and points B. The true course of the run line at point A is. Right. There's a few different ways that you can go about answering this question. There's a slow method and there's a quick method. The slow method would be to look at trigonometry because we've got positions of different latitudes um, and draw a triangle. I'll show you very, very briefly what it would look like. We're not going to do it. Um, we know that one degree of longitude is equivalent to 60 nautical miles. So you could say that the vertical side of our triangle is 60 nautical miles because the difference in latitude is one degree. We could then, um, using equivalent angles, we could say that the angle, um, where is it, there it is, uh, down here is the same as this angle up here. We could use departure to work out what the bottom length of our triangle would be um, and it would come out to about 357 degrees and then you could use trigonometry to work out what the size of the angle would be based on the uh, opposite side, i.e. the vertical side divided by um, the bottom length of the triangle and you'd come out with a particular answer and it's completely irrelevant because you don't have to do it that way. There will be times when you do have to use trigonometry to work out what the conversion angle, what the initial run line track is, but for this one you don't and that is because we also know that the great circle track between A and B is constantly changing but there are a couple of things that are consistent and that is the conversion angle at point A is the same as the conversion angle at point B. And we know that the path along the great circle follows something that looks like this. Now the average can be worked out in a few different ways, can't it? You've got mean, median, mode, and I think there's another one as well. Doesn't matter. The point is that the average great circle track can effectively be considered as the um, halfway point along our great circle route. And at the halfway point, the great circle route is parallel to our run line track. And if you go back to thinking about the way that lines of longitude have zero convergency at the equator, think about the fact that a, a line of longitude goes from the South Pole to the North Pole, convergency is maximum 
at the South Pole and maximum at the North Pole, however at the equator convergency is zero. That's kind of, well it is the same principle as what's going on here. At the midpoint of a great circle track, there's no convergency. The lines are parallel. So if the great circle track and the run line track are parallel, it means that they're both following the same heading. And if that's the case, we can go back to our um, initial exam question that we've got here and we can read in the question. It tells us that the average great circle track is 100 degrees. So the run line track from point A will also be 100 degrees. And if you'd done the trigonometric route and you'd done the tangent of the angle that I put up on the screen, which would be the uh, 60 nautical miles divided by, I think it was 360 odd, you'd end up with an angle of 10 degrees. You'd then have to add that, to, or just under 10 degrees, I think it was like 9.8 when I did it before. You then add it to a heading of east, 090, you come out with just under 100 degrees. And so you can go the long route or you can learn the little tricks and understand that average great circle route is the same as run line track. And that's a really, really simple couple of points that you can pick up in your exam. All right, let's do another exam question. This one says, you are flying from A, 50 north, 10 west, to B, 58 north, 2 east. If the initial great circle track is 047 degrees, what is the final great circle track? Okay, a few different things going on here. Start with a diagram. We're going from A, which is in the west. So A, and that is 50 degrees north, 10, 0, 1, 0 degrees west. We're going to B, which is 58 degrees north. Notice they've got different latitudes and it's 0, 0, 2 degrees east. We've got a run line between them and we've got a great circle between them. We know that we're in the northern hemisphere so we know our great circle track arches to the north. The initial great circle track is 0, 4, 7 degrees. That's going that direction. Um, it's asking what the final great circle track is. So they want us to tell them what that direction is. And again, this one has a couple of different ways of doing it. There's a slow way and there's a quick way. The slow way would be to, um, to work out what the run line track is between position A down here at 50 north and position B up here at 58 degrees north to work out what this angle is so that you can establish what this heading is here. However, you don't need to do that. All we need to do is work out what the total convergency is. They've told us our initial great circle track. We want the final great circle track. And we know that the final great circle track, the, the total convergency is going to give us this answer. So this is a really simple question. Again, we can just take our convergency formula and work out what the change in longitude is. Well, we go from 10 degrees west to two degrees east. That puts the Greenwich Meridian something like there. We've got 10 there and we've got two there, which gives us a change in longitude of 12 degrees. So we can say that our convergency formula is 12 times the sine of our mean latitude, the average latitude. To work that out in this case, we would take 50 degrees, we'd add 58 degrees, uh, it gives us 108 degrees, then divide it by two and you get an average latitude of 54 degrees. So 12 times the sine of 54 degrees, 12 sine 54 gives us 9.71 degrees. That's telling us that the total change in direction, remember convergency when it applies to uh, run lines and great circles is talking about the total change in direction of a great circle track. And that's what this question's asking us about. 
how much does our great circle track change from A to B um, from an initial track at A of uh, 0, 4, 7 to the final track when we get to B. So actually it's really simple because we can take the 0, 4, 7 that we've just uh, read off the screen, we can add to it the 9 degrees, 9.8 degrees that we just found using the convergency formula and we can say that our final track at position B is 0, 4, 7 degrees plus 9.7 degrees which comes out to, well let's do it on a calculator 56.7 from the answers that are available on the screen I would go with option A 057 degrees perfect okay let's take a look at one last sample exam question and it says, given the great circle from P to Q measured at P is 095 degrees in the southern hemisphere, the conversion angle from P to Q is 7 degrees. What is the run line track P to Q? Well, let's start at the start, draw a picture and try and work out what they're telling us. We've got two positions, we've got P, we've got Q and we're in the southern hemisphere which means our great circle track is down here. The conversion angle between P and Q is 7 degrees and the great circle from P measured at P in other words going this direction is 0, 9, 5 degrees. What is the run line track from P to Q? Hopefully you've already worked it out. This is not especially complicated. We can take, let's, in fact, let me break this diagram down even more. This is position P. It's asking us for the direction of this track, our run line track, having given us this track, which is our great circle track. They're telling us the difference between them is seven degrees, and they're telling us that this heading is 095 degrees. This is really straightforward. This is a case of 095 degrees minus 7 degrees and you should get 088 degrees. This is really not a difficult question but the four answers that are given to you are all plausible if you make a silly mistake. You could easily come out with 081 degrees if you decide that you want to take the conversion angle as total convergency so you add you multiply it by 2 before doing any maths to it you could easily come out with 102 or 109 degrees if you went the other direction last time draw a diagram read the question twice make it as straightforward for yourself as you possibly can okay and let, we better check that i've got it right so the correct answer is Okay, 088 degrees. And really, that is it for convergency. There's a third form of convergency, which I mentioned right at the beginning, which is chart convergency. We haven't gone into that here. That will be another series looking at different types of chart projection in the future. For now, we've looked at earth convergency and we've looked at convergency between run lines and great circles. So here are a few key points for you to take away. Firstly, earth convergency is the convergency between the longitude of two different positions on earth. Secondly, the convergency between a run line and a great circle uh, is the total change in a great circle track between two positions. And thirdly, the convergency formula is the change in longitude multiplied by the sine of the mean latitude. Also, the conversion angle is the angular difference uh, to convert a run line track to a great circle track or vice versa at the beginning or end of the track. And lastly, conversion angle is just half of the total convergency. And that's kind of it for this series looking at some of the fundamental concepts from GNAV. All that's left now for you to go and do is some practice questions to reinforce your learning. If you've got 
questions or comments about anything in this video or, or um, you've got ideas for a future video series, leave them in the comments for me below. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. It genuinely means a lot for me to, a lot to me to see this channel grow. Uh, like the video if you found it helpful and I'll see you next time with some more ATPL tips.